Hello, everyone. My name is Bernardo Sim, and I'm a writer for Out Magazine. Today, I'll be speaking with David Archuleta about his new song, Held Together. So let's get started. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you, Bernardo? Doing good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I was I listening to Held Together. The behind you. Yeah, right here. <laughs> They're great. They're great. <laughs> They're the cutest. I, yeah. Yeah. I used to get them like on my, I don't know, it was like for you page or something before I came out. And I was always just like, oh, wow, that's so interesting. Like I wasn't used to seeing, you know, older gays represented in like on social media like they were. So it's, yeah, that was really fun to see. Yeah. Even for us who are out for a long time, um, you know, unfortunately, we lost a lot of LGBTQ people over the years. So to see older people, um, you know, talking about sex, talking about dating, talking about all these things and aging, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and they're definitely the poster children for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for that experience. Um, so Held Together is a really great, really bold, really uh, uh, brave song uh, talking about your experiences with religion and how they have evolved, perhaps. Um, can you talk about the story and inspiration behind the song? Yeah, it was. So I grew up Mormon, right? Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints <laughs> is how they like to be addressed, Latter-day Saints. But um, I was very devout and um, it meant a lot to me. It was like a really special community for me to be a part of. And that was like my family. And I mean, literally my family was all Mormon too, but like, the people at church felt like family as well. And when I came out of the closet in 2021, I still tried to stay in the religion for about mm -hmm. a year. And it just, I started seeing the conf the conflict that was taking place. There were a lot of people in my church that were actually really supportive of me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in church that were like, this is the ch kind of change that we were hoping to see. And mm -hmm. thank you for speaking out. But the leaders, <laughs> it was kind of like, it was just a different attitude towards it. And uh, when I started seeing, I was like, you know what, this is starting to really affect my health. And I'm starting to see, now that I'm able to question their stance on like LGBTQ plus matters, I'm starting to question a lot of other of their matters. Um, and so it's like, you know, I think it's just better for me to step away. And and mm -hmm. then um, it, I unintentionally announced that I left the church in an interview with <laughs> in, a, in an interview. And so I was like, I started getting all these messages from people and they're like proud of you. And this, I'm like, thanks. I'm like proud for what? Like I, I already came out like over a year ago. Like what do you, and I didn't know this article had come out in people magazine. So I was just like, okay. And then all of a sudden one of my friends sends me the article. Cause I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Oh, Oh my gosh. I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't hear from my mom for a few days. I was like, oh my gosh, my mom's probably pissed off with me because my mom was super devout too. But when I finally heard back from her, all she said was, she's like, I decided to step away from the church as well. I was like, what? I'm like, mom, what? I was like, and uh, she's like, I don't want to be somewhere that my children who I love who are the most important thing to me in this life where they don't feel loved and they don't feel accepted. And so she said, if she said, if, if you're going to hell, then we're all going to hell with you. And I was just like, Oh, that's really sweet of her to say. Um, so I just, I was in a writing session. I was talking about it with some of my friends who I was writing with that day. And so we, I was, we decided to write a song on what my mom said. And so that's how Hell Together came about. Yeah. Um, last time I interviewed you was 2022. I was looking at it and um, I remember you were still new to coming out. And um, you, I very distinctly remembered that you were still trying to maintain a good relationship between, you know, coming out with your sexuality and, you know, being from the church and knowing so many people from the church. And uh, it's kind of sad that this relationship, you know, has soured and was broken. But um, can you talk to me about like, 
I guess the signs or what you saw over time that just started to confirm this this conclusion that like they were not going to budge, they were not going to accept you. Not really. Well, I'm actually writing a I'm actually in the middle of writing a book right now and I really delve into that whole process. So I'm excited to I will get very detailed in that. Cause I feel like yeah. there's just a lot to <laughs> A lot yeah. that goes into it, but I'm I'm excited for it. It's not written in a way where I'm like, you know, yeah. I, I just not really my style because I really do love um a lot of like it, it was like a place that I felt welcome for a long time and a, a place that I felt belonging and purpose. Um, but I do feel like there's some important things that need to be discussed and yeah. need to come to the front of the table. And, um, so I'm, I'm writing that, like, I'm I, I, after this interview, I'm going to write a little more. <laughs> I'm on like chapter 17 or something, but, uh, sometimes it's hard to write a book. I'm like, uh, like, I don't want to talk about this stuff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, this shit is too, like, uh, like, like I moved on from it. Why do I have to go back and talk about it? But I think yeah. it's important so people know the full picture of like what makes you who you are and why you came out and like who you are and who you are as a just person and an artist and all that too. So it's 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 uh, I'm excited to say that. But in the meantime, like until the book, I feel like the music has been portrayed my journey too. Like this song held together, I'm excited. It's like a good little chunk of like this whole journey. Yeah, um, we're going to go back to the music, but just since you mentioned the book, is there an ETA for when you think you're going to release it? Is it this year, next year? Um, I, I think we're just looking at it coming out sometime next year. Okay, so 2025, uh, David Archuleta's memoir. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I think it just depends on when I get things finished. And luckily, like, I've I've been ahead of schedule, they've told me which is good because at first I was like, Oh my gosh, I think I'm, I'm sucking at writing. I don't know how to do this. And, ah, uh, maybe I should just get a ghostwriter. <laughs> I'm like, this is a lot of work, but I talked to my friend Jeanette McCurdy and, um, I was like, what was your process? How did you get through like the homes and stuff? And it really helped me. And I was like, you know what? I've written a memoir before and I had a, I didn't really, it's like, it was more like, interviews mm -hmm. and someone else kind of like wrote what I said and I was like I feel like it would be really fulfilling like this time of life where I'm at being older having more of like control over my life um being able to tell my own story and like really yeah. write it and I, I'm working with an editor so like I still have you know I, I it seems like most writers work with an editor but I as far as like I want to be able to write it myself yeah. and then yeah like get the input i need to make sure it makes sense and it flows because like my brain like jumps all over the place i'm like oh. <laughs> uh, but so far it's been a really fulfilling project to take on yeah as someone who works as a writer it's a common thing that um writers uh, their favorite thing to do is writing and their least favorite thing to do is write um, so yeah, it's 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 a very complicated sense. relationship. Yeah, we love to do it, but yeah. it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to since you mentioned um, your relationship with your mom. Um, so she found out that you left the church after the People article came out, or how did that timeline go about? Um, I think yeah, we I had like conversations with her throughout that year just about where I was at but I, I think that's when she found out really where I stood with mm -hmm. everything and my feelings because it, it's not really something I tried you know I didn't know the article was going to come out and yeah. that that was going to be the headline so I was like huh <laughs> um, but I'm like well it's like ripping the band-aid off because uh, headlines always are like really dramatic you know I was like oh gosh like they make it sound like, oh, I'm like being liberated from my oppressive religion <laughs> and all that. I was like, no, I just like stopped going, you know, and <laughs> felt like it was just better for me to like move on with my life. But uh, I was yeah. worried about what she would think because I, I knew it was still important to her. But 
and to a lot of my friends. So I was like, I don't want people to think I'm like being a dick and like flipping all of them. Cause you know, religious, when you're religious and you're devout to something like not just religion, if you're devout to anyone, if you're devout to Taylor Swift or Beyonce or any other one, like, <laughs> like when you attack the thing you're devoted to, you take it personally. Okay. And so that's where a lot of, um, a lot of, religious people including mormons like w when you say something that they feel is dissing their thing it's like you're dissing a piece of them right. and it's like i hope that people can like distinguish the difference was like i still love you like i still love the community i still love my friends who are mormon i just had to take a step away and i had to di disconnect from that and for some reason people feel like if you don't love it as much as they do they're like oh no like how can we fix that and it's like, there's not anything to fix. I think it's just, you need to be willing to respect that people see things differently. And I hope that you can learn a little more and understand a little better someone else's point of view, why this was something that was unhealthy for me, even if it, you feel like it's something healthy for you. So it's, um, and hopefully, and it's for the most part, like most of my Mormon friends have been like really supportive of my queer journey and queer yeah. discovery. And it's been really nice. Yeah. Was, was your relationship with your mom a little more complicated after you came out and you were still trying to figure out how you would navigate your religion? Or was she always on your side? Like, did she see things and hear things that also changed her mind on her own? Like, I'm wondering, what was that journey like? Um, I would say, can you hear me okay, by the way? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I what my mom wasn't supportive at first she mm -hmm. she felt like because of her beliefs she needed to defend her beliefs because in religion you're taught nothing's more important than god like not even your own family like even the people you love you should love god more than them and that so i think my mom got to a point where she realized um that's not really correct and that's just a belief that a lot of people a lot of people have that isn't really accurate and it's hard for people to fathom that be but um i think when that clicked in her she she realized like her own intuition and instincts and guidance she's like you know i'm gonna do she did what was the best thing for her and that was to also step away and be there for her kids and i really appreciate that and I, she didn't have to i didn't ask her to <laughs> she just reached that conclusion herself and um, my mom's great. Like I, I really love my mom and I know not everyone's moms and parents are like that. I've, I've had, um, friends who were kicked, I had friends who were kicked out, uh, because of that and because of them coming out and, you know, my heart really goes out for them. And I hope that people can, you know, by being more public and transparent about my journey with me and with my mom. My mom is also very open and outspoken because she doesn't want anyone to view their kid the way she did at first. Right. And um, she she wants parents to we like we 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 just want people to be there for their kids, even if you don't fully understand what it's like to be gay or queer or trans or anything. Like you don't have to know completely. You just understand like if you just listen to their story and what they go through and how they feel. Like just by listening to someone's story, you can you can be there so much more for them and accept them and embrace them. And um, yeah, you'll realize that it's not as evil and bad as we were grown, grown up being taught, taught that it is, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my last question about this topic of, of religion specifically, I'm curious your perspective. I was not never Mormon. I did not uh, grow up in that culture. Um, but uh, when we see when I see efforts from the vocalists of Imagine Dragons, Dan Reynolds, um, to like push inclusive inclusivity to the Mormon Church, have you ever met him? Have you ever reached out to you? How do you feel about those projects? Um, thoughts, feelings, perspectives? Because um, I don't know how to feel sometimes. I know he is a great ally or appears to be. But um, yeah, I, I wonder sometimes how it feels from someone that literally went through that. 
um, how you see those those festivals and those efforts. I love Dan. I he's been a dear friend of mine since I for over a decade now, and right. um, I met him at church. <laughs> so we were both going to church here in LA, and um, he uh, when he first started talking about that stuff, like I I I, I still wasn't really aware of Mm -hmm. the lgbt plus world so Mm -hmm. i was willing to like listen to it i didn't know where i was with my queerness either i didn't really understand it um but the things that dan has done has made a huge impact on the utah community which then impacts the rest of the mormon community because it's utah's the mormon mecca Mm -hmm. and he had he started a conversation that didn't exist before because the leaders of the church really, well, just, you know, LGBT issues weren't talked about. And so for Dan to suddenly have a lot of attention, he was in Imagine Dragons there at the peak of their career. And he was just, he was just like, um, Hey, we need to discuss LGBT youth and why there's such a high suicide rate for them in Utah. And it just, everyone was like, huh? Like it shocked everyone. And um, so I feel like he started a conversation that helped me. Like it had a direct impact on me feeling safer to come out. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. That is incredible. It's incredible to see allyship be actually like impactful and like influence a whole community. Um, I remember watching the documentary. I don't know what the documentary is called, but um, I, I thought it was Love Loud. Beautiful. Love Loud. Yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful a documentary. Um, when I interviewed you, yeah, there, I, have last, a, I have actually, I have actually, so I have a, there's another story I've, I'm going to talk about in my, I talk about in my book about that documentary and about Dan and Love Loud and all that. So, oh, yeah, interesting. I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so when I, I wasn't supporting time, you, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. It's, it's, no, I, I think there's a delay. <laughs> uh, there's, um, I, I was just saying that I wasn't, I, I talked about because I wasn't supportive of what he was doing at first mm. and I wasn't supportive of the documentary. So it'll be, I, I look forward to talking about that whole experience too, but. And that happens. It's a common experience. Um, that happens um, to 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 go from that place to this place. Um, when we last spoke, you 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 were still saying that you know you were coming out and you were a part of the LGBTQ community. Have you since then identified with either with any of the labels within the acronym, or are you still rather not use a label? Like, do you in what do you do? Sorry, I, I, do you identify There's yourself? There's a squirrel walking by. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Do I identify well, yourself like... as as any of the labels within the acronym LGBTQ or or do you prefer not putting a label yet? Like, do you consider yourself gay, bisexual, queer? I Have you landed I, on one? I personally feel like, like not using a label, but I do. Mm-hmm. I, I just say queer just because mm-hmm. that way people know I'm not straight. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the broadest one, and why not? Yeah, it's 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 the closest we get to not putting an exact label on it. Um, yeah, so I, I would say I still like. I I think I'm pretty consistent. I feel even when I came out in in my post when I first came out, you know, because I I first came out as gay to my family, uh, but I realized that wasn't that didn't feel right, and so at the time that I came out to everybody, I said I was on the spectrum of bisexual and on the asexual spectrum as well. And I'm still, I, I feel like I'm, you know, there are terms that I learned like demisexual and gray sexual and mm-hmm. things like that, that make more sense. And I feel like I'd rather just not use labels because I'm still trying to figure myself out. So that's why queer makes sense to me. It's like that yeah. way people know I'm, I'm not straight, but I think it's, you know, I wouldn't say I'm, a complete completely homosexual just one sex <laughs> either uh, of attraction so yeah i yeah. i'm still figuring it out 
That's awesome. Just, I, I would just like to sidebar, um, just talking to you two years later, you are so much more confident and comfortable and like at ease, like talking about these things. And it's pretty cool to see like what two years can do to someone. Um, it's really, really awesome to see it. Just as someone who has been out for a long time, um, it's really cool to see how much confidence and like you're just very comfortable talking about these things and laughing and um yeah, just just living as your most authentic self and having fun, and and, and Thank you. speaking of speaking of fun and having fun and being comfortable, um, your TikToks are going viral every other week, <laughs> talking oh, about they? something. Yeah, talking about something, and it's really fun to see you just you know you're experiencing basically like your other lessons now, like a, like a like a, another other lessons. And um, yeah. you're having a blast, and we're having a blast seeing you navigate this new world, um, not understand certain slangs and certain lingo, and learn um, in real time. Um, how has it been to be sharing these these moments of like unfiltered moments of of navigating queer life? Um. Yeah, I, I guess there's like a series. It wasn't intentional. Like <laughs> one of the guys, there was like a trend, and I, my one of my my friend uh, who helps me with my social media is like, hey, there's a. He's like, I know you like doing like height trends because like you're like because I've done them before, like being about being short because I'm five foot five. Mm -hmm. And he's like, there's this there's a short trend do, going around. You should do it. I was like, okay, so I did it, but it wasn't a height trend. It was something else. So I was like, but I didn't know until after. Like I posted it. I I wasn't thinking anything of it after that. I was at an event that night, and then my and and then Jake texts me. He's like, "Hey, so like people are taking your your TikTok the wrong way." I was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Oh no! Like, did I do something wrong?" And he's like, "No, people are just being like sexual about it." I'm like, "Oh, I'm like, well, of course they are. You know, they're they'll." They I was like, I feel like gay guys will turn anything sexual. So I was like, yeah, I won't oh. think anything of it. <laughs> and, but then I get home and I realize <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Like I started looking you at saw it too, though. There's a video that you realize yourself, like, I get what you're saying. Like, I think no. that you're like, no? No. Oh, I, no. Like, I eventually. It, it wasn't until I started reading everyone's comments. Right, 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 right. right that I put it together and I was like I started looking at like other the videos and I was like this isn't a short person trend and yeah. I was so <laughs> shocked like I was ready to go to bed I was like in bed already I was just like, kind of looking I'm like I wonder what people it's like oh my goodness I but and so then, yeah, it opened up a can of it opened up a conversation that I never had had with people before which I think is good because yeah. growing up Mormon, it's like, you're not supposed to talk about this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, since I'm not Mormon anymore, I guess I can. I guess I can. <laughs> so um, it was actually, it was, it was like relieving, actually. And it was like, ah, okay. So I don't have to like dance around this anymore, or, like shy away from talking about like more mature subject matter or, or about your dick or whatever, you know, or like. And it's sex and things like that so yeah yeah there was also famously the post about the hickey that made headlines around the uh, world <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction oh to seeing God. it become news <laughs> well i didn't flat out say anything particular i just was thanking my walgreens mm -hmm. employee who helped me show the magic of makeup you know that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we can we we can keep it at that. Then we can keep it at that. Um, as a new queer person navigating this life and you know dating and going out, um, what are some places that you like going out? What do you like having? What do, what do you like doing to have fun these days? I mean, I love to go dancing. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a, I feel like I'm my mother's son because my mom used to go out dancing every week when I was little. <laughs> She did salsa dancing and flamenco. I remember her taking flamenco classes. Sometimes she would take me. But um, I love to dance. I love to go to DJ sets, EDM festivals. Um, I just love it. I love the rave culture. Uh, 
And what else? I mean, I like, yeah, I, I guess that's like the thing I usually look forward to. And I love going to eat as well. Food, taco trucks and taco stands are my go-to. They're my favorite. But mm -hmm. I love, I just love a good meal with good people. I, I, I think that's one of my favorite things. As far as dating goes, are you on the apps? Are you not on the apps? Are you single? Are you committed? Where do you stand? I'm, I've been putting myself out there and it's, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying the process. I've still try to, I still try to figure out like, you know, like my, also just my sexuality. Um, so like I, I leave it kind of open, you know, I don't close the door necessarily on anything still because I'm still trying to figure out what, you know, who I am. And it's been nice. It's nice not having to feel controlled by anything. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I still am controlled by the mindset I grew up with, uh, but it's, I'm being patient with myself. I don't feel like I'm in a rush for anything. Um, yeah. So it's, it's nice to kind of go at my pace instead of, you know, being a Mormon where you're already, you're always pressured to be, get married. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, you know, what? I can just get to know people and interact with them and see who I have chemistry with and who I don't and get to know what I, my preferences are more and what I find attractive in someone and what I don't. It's so it's I'm enjoying yeah. it. I'm enjoying it. And I find that uh, people who, you know, live for so long by these set of rules, maybe because they come from you know, they're Catholics or Mormons or whatever the situation may be. Sometimes it's the military, growing up in a military household, yeah. you know, and then they come out and they go out into the world. And unfortunately, our community does like um, making these like set of rules about how everybody should act or say or, or whatever. And to your point, it's kind of like we, we, we resented those, those boundaries and those limitations when we were growing up. By, from whatever background we have and then now we're free to do whatever and we're going to put new rules like no like just be who you are and like do your thing and figure it out why would we impose new rules since we didn't like the first rules which is kind of weird yeah that's what i found interesting as well but um you know i it's kind of like maybe like a culture it kind of gives it structure so that people know what to identify with and kind of have their tribe and yeah. i i feel like you know, religion is just a form of tribe where people want somewhere to belong and they feel like they have their tribe. So like I, I look at the LGBTQ plus community as another like form of tribe where people can belong and support each other. And I think that's beautiful about humans and life. Um, wherever they can find their tribe is in a sense of belonging and purpose to keep going. Um, and I, I hope that people can always check their their rules and their boundaries and limits that they set within their community and yeah. to keep each other in check and just remind it's like hey like let's set healthy limits that like keep each other safe but like let's not set too many and set too many expectations because right. we're still growing and we're still learning um there's a lot more to discover about people and life and technology and progress of <laughs> as we continue <laughs> evolving so um you know, like it's just, for example, like with people, like with um, bisexuality and asexuality, like, like how sexuality can be a spectrum from like who you're attracted to and like in what ways you're attracted, how attracted you are. Um, sometimes I feel like people try to box you in too quickly, like, oh, well, you came out. So that means that you're just this. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, I'm still why why can't i just dwell somewhere in the middle like i feel good and i've you know i found pe people who experience the same way like it's been fun to meet people who are you know have friends who are just straight but like still love you like allies and people who are just completely gay and they're like i don't know what it's like to be attracted to, to a woman and then you have like your bisexual people who it's not really 50 50 like everyone's kind of like well i'm a little over here i'm a little over right. there and people who are like super horny and just always like looking to <laughs> hook up or like people who are just like, you know what? Like once I make a connection with someone, then I start feeling this desire to get to know them more physically and intimately. And I think it's all beautiful. Like, I think it's really yeah. been lovely 
going to the like the queerities and the glad media awards last week and just seeing all these people like of all different kinds both people who are gay men and just lesbian women and trans people and drag queens like all these things that i used to like not understand at all I'm like what is this world but now it's like i see the beauty and just all the all the colors of the rainbow you know like all, all the <laughs> different all the colors it's of the spectrum you know all, all shades yeah. of the spectrum that makes this community i think it's just really wonderful yeah and i used to be so Last... afraid of it just a year ago yeah 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 people are still just afraid of it a lot of people are so afraid of it, and um, it it really only takes going to an event with 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 the diverse group to see that no one is coming for you. Like no one is trying to threaten anybody. We're just there to be ourselves. But I really want to talk about because our time is almost running up about the music video for the song because you just recorded it right um, yeah. yesterday. Um, we'll hold this interview until it's close to the release date. So what can you okay. tell us and tease us about the music video? The music video, um, I wanted to, it to represent um, this feeling of change, like of transitioning into a place that's scary. You're mm-hmm. leaving somewhere that you're comfortable with, like a place you've always known. And you don't know what's going to be outside that door. And, but you know, it's the, the place, you, it's the right place to go. And, um, so I, there's, there's um, shots of me and there's also shots of like dancing that a dancer that represents unconditional love. So I'm, and I'm really excited. Like the, the person was great. I met them through one of my, the people I dance with, um, one of my dancers, Christos, who was in a Jordy video. He was like, look at this. I just shot this video, Jordy, he's a singer. I'm like, yeah. wow, I love the shots. They're so beautiful. And then I was, it was time for me to shoot a video. I'm like, wow. and so I was just like, who, who's that person? Who's the person that shot the, and so he sent me the contact info and I contact her, Lily Judge is her name. And she had the time and I'm really happy. She was great to work with and I'm really excited. She did, her team was just really wonderful. Um, Ryan who did, was the DP, Luke who did the camera work. Just a great team that we got to shoot with yesterday. Okay, so I'm excited to watch the music video, um, and I'm excited for everyone to listen to the song. I think it's gonna be, things gonna make waves. I think it's a really good song, and um, I think it has a really good message. And I'm, I'm really Thank happy you. that you're releasing this song right now, um, especially at a time like this when our community is, you know, being under attack and stuff like mm-hmm. that. That is not fun, but this is an empowering song, I think. Um, and a lot of people will find meaning in it. Um, so thank you. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, and yeah. have a wonderful day. Thank you, Bernardo. Good to, to, good to talk to you as well.